In Hinduism, there are diverse approaches to conceptualizing God and gender. Many Hindus focus upon impersonal absolute Brahman, which is genderless. Other Hindu traditions conceive God as androgynous both female and male, alternatively as either male or female, while cherishing gender henotheism, that is without denying the existence of other gods in either gender, the Shakti tradition conceives of God as a female. Other Bhakti traditions of Hinduism have both male and female gods. In ancient and medieval Indian mythology, each masculine diva of the Hindu pantheon is partnered with a feminine who is often a Devi. History Male and female deities are extensively mentioned in the Vedas. The earliest mandalas books. The authorship of each mandala is traditionally ascribed to a particular rishi or that rishi's family of the Rigveda, estimated to have been composed sometime in the 2nd millennium BCE, invoke and praise both gods and goddesses. Usha's goddess of dawns is praised in 20 hymns of chapters v.64, v.65, 7.78 and by.172, with hymn v.64.5 declaring goddess Ushas as the one who must be worshipped first. Hymn to Ushas abridged. The shining tints of the dawn have spread like the waves of the waters. Beautifying the world, she renders all good roads easy to traverse. She who is replete with delight, excellence and health, Divine Ushas, though art seen auspicious, thou shinest afar. Thy bright rays spread over the sky, lovely and radiant with great splendor. Do thou Ushas bring me opulence, daughter of heaven. Thou who art divine, who art lovely, who art to be worshipped at the first daily rite. At thy dawning, divine Ushas, birds fly from their resting places, men arise to work. Thou, divine Ushas, bring ample wealth to the mortal, the offerer of these prayers. Goddesses, other than Ushas, mentioned in early Vedic literature include Thivi Earth, Aditi Mother of Gods, Abundance, Sarasvati River, Nourishment, Vak Sound and Speech, and Nirdi Death, Destruction. Similarly male gods feature prominently in the Vedas, with Indra Rain, Lightning, Agni Fire, Varuna RTA, Law, Dias Sky, Virility, Savitar Surya, Sun, and Soma Drink some of the most mentioned. The two deities most mentioned in Rigveda are Indra and Agni, both male. Surya is the third most revered god, again a male. Each is mentioned, anywhere rain and fire is evoked. They are profusely praised, with ceremonies and prayers to all gods and goddesses symbolically organized around fire Agni Yajna. The hymns seek strengthening of fire, and it is god Indra who increases the energy of the fire, while god Surya increases his brightness. Max Muller states that, while there are difference in frequency of mentions, gods and goddesses in Rig Veda are neither superior nor inferior, almost every one is represented as supreme and absolute." Gross states that ancient and medieval Hindu literature is richly endowed with gods, goddesses and androgynous representations of God. This, states Gross, is in contrast with several monotheistic religions, where God is often synonymous with he, and theism is replete with male anthropomorphisms. In Hinduism, goddess imagery does not mean loss of male god, rather the ancient literature presents the two genders as balancing each other and complementary. The goddesses in Hinduism, states Gross, are strong, beautiful and confident, symbolizing their vitality in cycle of life. While masculine gods are symbolically represented as those who act, the feminine goddesses are symbolically portrayed as those who inspire action. Goddesses in Hinduism are envisioned as the patrons of arts, culture, nurture, learning, arts, joys, spirituality and liberation. God is not either male or female concept in ancient Indian literature. Androgynous concepts of God are commonplace as well. <laughs> Brahman Most major schools of Hindu philosophy focus their philosophical discourse on the universal absolute, called Brahman, which is a grammatically genderless noun. This universal absolute, states Zimmer, is "...beyond the differentiating qualifications of sex, beyond any and all limitations, individualizing characteristics whatsoever." The Brahman is the great cosmic spirit, the ultimate true reality, the supreme self. It is a transcendental concept that includes all virtues, forms, genders, characteristics, capacities, knowledge and beingness. 
The history of the genderless concept of Brahman, as the omnipresent absolute spirit and supreme self, can be traced back to Vedas, and extensively in the earliest Upanishads, such as hymns 1.4.10 and 4.4.5 of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, and hymns 6.2.1 of Chandogya Upanishad 6.2.1.Zimmer clarifies the notion of gender in Sanskrit language and its relation to the concepts of Brahman and God in Hinduism, as follows. It must be understood that in Sanskrit, grammatical gender is not always a sign of physical sex. Gender infers function, sex infers form, so that an individual may be masculine from one point of view and feminine from another. Brahman can be regarded as the womb of life, and as in Christianity, this man and this woman are equally feminine to God in Hinduism. Absolutely, Brahman, although grammatically neuter, is the principle of all such differentiation. Essence and nature are respectively masculine and feminine, logically distinct, but one in God, who is neither this nor that in Hinduism, and therefore it, rather than he, or she, specifically. Mythology <inaudible> <inaudible> Hindu mythology incorporates numerous devas gods and devas goddesses. These are symbolic stories that synthesize god and gender, with ideas and values. The Vishnu Purana, for example, recites one such myth describes male gods and female goddesses with names that is loaded with symbolism. An excerpt of the story is as follows. The progeny of Dharma by the daughters of Daksha were as follows, by Sraddha devotion he had Kama desire, by Lakshmi wealth prosperity, was born Darpa pride, by Driti courage, the progeny was Niyama precept, by Tushd I inner comfort, Santasha contentment, by Pushd I opulence, the progeny was Loba cupidity, greed, by Metta wisdom, experience, Sruta sacred tradition, by Kriya hard work, labor, the progeny were Dand, A, Naya, and Vinaya justice, politics, and education, by Buddy intellect, bada understanding, by laja shame, humility, vinaya good behavior, by vapu body, strength, vyavasaya perseverance. Shanti peace gave birth to kashama forgiveness, siddhi excellence to sukha enjoyment, and kirti glorious speech gave birth to yasha reputation. These were the sons of dharma, one of whom, kama love, emotional fulfillment had baby hersha joy by his wife nandi delight. The wife of Adharma vice, wrong, evil, was Hinsa violence, on whom he begot a son Anrita falsehood, and a daughter Nikriti immorality. They intermarried, and had two sons, Bhaiya fear, and Naraka hell, and twins to them, two daughters, Maya deceit, and Vedana torture, who became their wives. The son of Bhaiya fear, and Maya deceit was the destroyer of living creatures, or Meridiu death, and Dukkha pain was the offspring of Naraka hell, and Vedana torture. The children of Meridiu were Vyadi disease, Hara decay, Soka sorrow, Trishna greediness, and Krata wrath. These are all called the inflictors of misery, and are characterized as the progeny of vice adharma. They are all without wives, without posterity, without the faculty to procreate, they perpetually operate as causes of the destruction of this world. On the contrary, Daksha and the other rishis, the elders of mankind, tend perpetually to influence its renovation, whilst the Manus and their sons, the heroes endowed with mighty power, and treading in the path of truth, as constantly contribute to its preservation. Examples Smarta and Advaita The Smarta tradition, which by and large, follows Advaita philosophy believes all forms, male and female, to be different forms of the impersonal absolute, Brahman which is of neuter gender and can never be defined. Brahman is viewed as without personal attributes Brahman or with attributes Saguna Brahman, equated with Ishvara as God. In Advaita Vedanta, Ishvara is Brahman. Thus according to Smarta views, the divine can be with attributes, saguna Brahman, and also be viewed with whatever attributes, e.g., a goddess a devotee conceives. <laughs> Shiva and Vishnu In Vaishnavism and Shaivism, God, Vishnu or Shiva respectively, is personified as male. God, however, transcends gender in these sub-schools, and the male form is used as an icon to help focus the puja worship. The use of icons is not restricted to male forms. It takes various forms and shapes. 
The Shaivites and Vaishnavites worship God in non anthropomorphic, symbolic male female images as well, such as the Linga Yoni and Salagram, respectively. In their literature, the principle of God's true nature as sexless is emphasized as in the Vishnu Sahasranama, thus, the first few names, of Vishnu Sahasranama, in particular, do not describe features of Vishnu in detail and hence are not anthropomorphic. Shakti Shaktism, on the other hand, is a denomination of Hinduism that worships Shakti, or Devi Mata, the Hindu name for the Great Divine Mother, in all of her forms whilst not rejecting the importance of masculine and neuter divinity which are however deemed to be inactive in the absence of the Shakti. In pure Shaktism, the great goddess, or Devi, is worshipped. N. N. Bhattacharya explained that those who worship the supreme deity exclusively as a female principle are called Shakta. Alternative interpretations of Shaktism, however, primarily those of Shaivite scholars, such as Saturu Savaya Subramuniaswami, argue that the feminine manifest is ultimately only the vehicle through which the masculine unmanifest parasiva is ultimately reached. Radha Krishna The common separation of Sakti and Saktiman, i.e. female and male principle in God arrives at the conclusion Sakti and Saktiman are the same. Each and every god has its partner, better half or sakti and without this sakti he is sometimes viewed being without essential power. In some bhakti schools, devotees of Hinduism worship both genders as a god pair, rather than a specific gender. From the Vaishnava point of view the divine feminine energy shakti implies a divine source of energy, i.e. God is shaktiman. Sita relates to Rama, Lakshmi belongs to Narayana, Radha has her Krishna. The female, in these pairs, is viewed as the source of energy and essence of the male. One of the prominent features of Vaishnavism in Manipur, for example, is the worship of the two genders together. Devotees do not worship Krishna alone, or Radha alone, but Radha Krishna. Rasa and other dances are a feature of the regional folk and religious tradition and often, for example, a female dancer will portray both male Krishna and his consort, Radha, in the same piece. See also God and gender Radha Krishna Ardhanarishvara Ardhanari Sky Father Feminism God God Male deity Goddess Topic Notes Topic References Schwartz, Susan. 2004. Rasa, Performing the Divine in India. New York, Columbia University Press. ISBN 0 231 13145 3. Rosen, Stephen. The Hidden Glory of India. Los Angeles, Bhaktivedanta Book Trust. ISBN 0 89213 351 1. Valpe, Kenneth Russell. Attending Kresna's Image, Caitanya Vaisnava Murti Siva as Devotional Truth. New York, Routledge. ISBN 0-415-38394-3. Schweig, G. M. Dance of Divine Love, the Rasa Lila of Krishna from the Bhagavata Purana, India's Classic Sacred Love Story. Princeton University Press, Princeton, N.J., Oxford. ISBN 0-691-11446-3.